when I messaged you and you were like, man, there's going to be five deals closed from you guys. I was like, yo, that's, that's awesome, dude. So, you know, yeah. that's uh thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, it's a really big deal for me. You yeah. Know, you know, being an entrepreneur that, you know, creates, creating something is one thing. Right. Um, but, you know, creating something that works and makes people a lot of yeah. money is, you know, another thing. So, you know, uh, that's really, you know, that's really music to my ears in so many ways. But, but yeah, man, I wanted to jump on here and just chat with you about the success that you're seeing, you know, to yeah. so many people out there the success you're seeing is still a fairy tale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> you <know>? right. Man. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, you know, and I, and I think the main difference, it really is probably just taking massive action. I saw you yeah. saw my post from earlier and it's like, you know, just doing the damn work and, yeah. and it's much harder said than done. I mean, you right. know, even at my level, where my little decisions make me so much money in the end, I still have a hard time making those little decisions because, you know, we all have our level of comfort, you know? Yes. Um, yes. But, but anyways, I just want to say th thanks for meeting with me today. Course, it was awesome. You go way back. And I agree with you on that. Um, it's funny because the first deal that I got from you from doing the text campaign to the realtors for me, yeah. I, made five, I made five grand on that deal. And I knew that your text campaigns worked. I knew they worked. Right. And so there's a list service I buy. They have the list of the realtors, the names, the emails. And, and this is the list that I send you guys. And my mind was trying to F with me. Like, are you sure it's going to work? All right. So it, 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 it happens. It's like, it's, even when you have success, that's Ooh. why you, you have to have that control over your mind. The mental, it all starts with the mindset. Yeah, right. It all, well, really, it starts with the desire. But if you don't have, if you have the mindset, it really like, it, it, you always have to be in control of your mind and your thoughts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to say, F you mind and override it and do what you need to do for yourself. Yeah, or even like, and even even if it's like procrastination, like, mm -hmm. you know, you could be so close to creating something where you're like, I just want to finish this season, uh, Netflix, and then right. I'll start. And then yeah. I'll, I'll be right <laughs> after this episode, <laughs> you yeah. know? Right after this episode, I'm going to call that lead, but I'm going to hit play yeah. real quick. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, you, you know what it reminds you of? It reminds me of, and I, I believe you used to be a relationship coach, so this will probably speak yeah. to you. It reminds me of being in a not toxic relationship with the woman. So the other day, um, you know, me and my girlfriend, we were going through something and then right. we, we ran out of something and, right. you know, and she really needed it. And, you know, and she got a little bit upset. And right. you know what? at that point, I was like, you know, I could either get upset, too, right. or I can just drive to the damn store and get it, <laughs> you know? And it's like, dude, 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 I swear to you, I was like, baby, I got you. I'm gonna go right. to CVS right now. Right. And then, and then on my way to CVS, I remembered I had five other groceries to get, so I ended right. up getting. And then I call up, like, you need anything from the grocery store? And then I, right. I'm driving home, and I'm like, Nick, do you know if I would have chosen to fight to fight back, right. then? It would have ruined my day. It would have it would have taken the next seven hours, or mm -hmm. I could take fifteen minutes and mm -hmm. just go get what's needed. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's almost like the same conversation. It's absolutely. Are we going to choose the toxic trait, or mm -hmm. are we going to choose the the productivity trait? Yes. Yes. You know? And uh, yeah. and when I was driving back, I'll tell you what, man, I was patting myself on the back. <laughs> <there again. You> know? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you know me i came home and i, and I spoke to my girl about it and i was like yo right because i was like these are the decisions the decisions we need to make moving forward we can yeah. always choose to finish that episode of netflix or just fight back but if right. we just concede and go hey this guy wants to sell let me let me give him a call let me do this yeah. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna take it so much further i agree one thousand percent and here's the thing when you do that you build self-esteem you feel better, you feel more confident, you right. like yourself more because yeah. 
whether you know it or not, subconsciously or unconsciously, when you procrastinate, it, it takes away from your self-esteem. You feel bad about yourself. And then you get into that fear. This is all fear-based. Mm. Procrastination is all fear-based. Mm. Um, not, um, not, not reinvesting in your business because you're afraid you're going to lose money. That's all fear-based. And yeah. you cannot win in this life being fearful. That doesn't mean you don't have fear. It's that you have the fear and you move forward you anyway. Right. That yeah. is the difference. Nobody yeah. is completely fearless. And the thing is, once you start doing it, it's not that you're fearless. It's that you become comfortable so much. It's like you wake up and you brush your teeth. You don't think about brushing your teeth. Right. You've been yeah. doing it since whatever. When and when you first start, you're like, am I doing this right? And you yeah. know, that's such a good point. Then when the problems, like you're saying about confidence, when the problem comes up again, you're like, I already got the solution for this. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right here, you know? It's not like, oh, oh, you know, and that's a good point you were saying about procrastination can begin, can accidentally begin a downward slope of confidence, right? Absolutely. Right, what a good point. Absolutely, because you go into that rabbit hole, you procrastinate, then you overthink, and then you think about, I've never done this before. I've never been successful before. Is this real? Is this a scam? I don't know. Let me go online and look at reviews. Oh, this person, it's, it's also deep. Right. Yep. Yes, rabbit hole. That's yep. why you just got to take action, no matter what your brain That's says. Good. And then when you come through it, it's it's um what we call, um what do they call it in therapy? Exposure therapy, right? Yeah, you're exposing yeah. yourself to a, to like a new reality. Yes, because like you said in the beginning, people feel like this is a fairy tale, the success right. that I'm having. <laughs> right. And I feel like that. I still can't believe it. But the thing is, when you do it anyway, and you start to have it, it's, it becomes a part of your reality. And then you expect it, not in a bratty way, but you expect like, hey, I put in the work, of course, I'm going to have success. And right. it may right. not be instant, I'm going to go through some BS to get it. But once I um, hit that trajectory, like a rocket ship, I'm going to have it. But once I get to a certain plateau and I escape velocity, I'm going to be fine. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be That's fine. a good point. And w- once you get past the gravity, you know, absolutely, things start changing. And, you know, and that's why I think our service is so good. Like you said, yeah. it, it, and it's not so much that it works. It's that we do the work. And I always mm. tell when, when people call us, they're like, what's your secret? I'm like, yeah. honestly, we we're just consistent and we do it like yes. my script is on the internet if you want to call yeah. someone and use the script <laughs> also want to use the script but you know it's like it's for free on the website but it's like yeah. that's not what it is it's the ability for my callers to wake up every day and continue yes. to do it and i think that that's where and, and i love it when clients are become clients of mine and they ran their own text campaigns or they did mm-hmm. their own cold calling and then they call me because mm-hmm. it allows them to, oh, wow, you guys are really doing this. Yes. It's like one of the first things that they say. But yeah. what, what they forget, which is why I want to give you a pat on the back, is we turn getting the lead into the easy part. Yes. Right? Like getting yes. the lead is no longer difficult when you hire lead mining. You now have a new hard job, and that is to call the lead even though the notes suck that's to follow up with the lead even though they didn't say exactly what you wanted them to say you know and then and then to really you know it's so easy because if you think it's a fairy tale and Mm -hmm. the notes don't line up then you're like well this is never going to be my fairy tale because it doesn't make sense but you know what i tell everyone Mm -hmm. this is our first contact with these people I'm right. not going to tell you that my upstairs bathroom floods every time I flush it on the right. first <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going right. to tell you that the AC in half of the house doesn't even fucking work. Okay? <laughs> like these aren't like, like, hey, what's up? My house is in shambles. How are you? Right, you right, know? right. And that's where doing the work, I mean, is really going to pierce that vulnerability. You know, you guys right. following up and then actually making the call and doing it. Um, but, you know, I did, I did want to give you some more credit before we keep going. So yeah. you, you, you're a real estate investor. Um, yeah. You've been working with us for quite some time. And yeah. how many deals have you currently closed with lead mining? 
Well, it'll be five this month. It'll be five, five this month. Yeah, for about twenty thousand. Yeah. Wow. And and one more one more question. Have you yes. have you closed a deal in real estate outside of lead mining? Um, I have, but it cost me way more money. I was doing okay. mailers. Okay. It cost me way more money. So it cost me the campaign with you. Seventeen hundred bucks, and I made twenty thousand dollars. My other stuff, it cost me like six thousand bucks to get one deal. Are you serious? Yeah, with the that was that was that was direct mail. That's direct mail. Yeah. Uh huh. So it the the cost efficiency doesn't even compare right. to as far as what you guys offer. It's 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 very cost efficient compared to other methods. Yeah, dude, that's uh, I actually I didn't know that. So so it sounds like you've closed six in total. Yeah. Is that is that where we're at? And then five of them are going to yeah. be from our service. Oh, that well, you know, yeah. I guess the best news there is at least you found us early, right? Um, yeah, yeah. At least you didn't spend another six Gs on mailers. And <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and and you know you know what I tell people too. What I love about what we do is I really think that the way we approach lead gen is a skill-based approach. Sure. Now, the main difference there is my cold caller skill, our consistency, our attitude, all that matters. When you do direct mail, I mm -hmm. joke, and sometimes I say it's like pulling the pin on a grenade and then throwing right. it, and you're like, right. damn, I, I hope that goes off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, yeah, yeah. And, and it works, right? We all know direct mail. It all mail. works. It but, all works. But you know, it is a little, it's, that's not a very skilled approach, right? Right. And, and right. what I love about the skilled approach means that the greater the skill, the more we can produce. There's really no direct mail skill. I mean, you might right. stack a list or something, right. right? Right. But there's no like ninja move. There's no like, right. hiya, you know? So I think that that too, kind of what you were saying is why our, are we why we can make so much traction on 1700 versus the 6000 because yeah. it's not just the work it's the work plus the skill equals the yeah. work, you know? yes i totally agree and and going back to what you're saying the reason why i love your service is you know it's so funny so most real estate investors don't even get to the point and you guys do 80 percent of the work i believe in the 80 20 rule so yeah. Most investors don't even get to the point of consistently um, cold calling, consistently texting, right? They'll, they'll buy the dollar, they'll get the tech service, they'll do it for maybe a month or two, and then they stop. And so, because so many people reach out to me, and they're like, what are you doing? You know, everybody wants these shortcuts, and there's no <laughs> shortcuts, man. There's What's no the shortcuts, secret? What's man. the secret? Right, yeah. There's no shortcuts, there's no secret. It's consistency, being consistent and persistent, period. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fell faster. And what your service mm -hmm. allows me to do, it allowed me and other people, is to feel faster. Feel faster, feel quicker. Right? right? Because at the end of the day, I don't care what anybody says, real estate is a volume game. It's a people's game and it's a volume game. Period. Yeah. So if you're not doing volume, you're gonna, it's it's gonna be very slow for you. It's gonna be very slow for you. So your service allows you to just bang, go in there and hit everything with a bang. You know, love, you know what I'm just uh, I'm, I'm big on, you know, I do all my own marketing. So um, yeah. a quote that just came up to me for me, because what you just said was, let us be consistent for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that that's such a powerful statement. I just had a girl call me yesterday to speak to your mm -hmm. exact point. I said, what's your current monthly budget? Well, she says, Nick, to be honest with you right now, I'm spending 600 a month between prop stream batch dialer, batch leads, skip tracing. And I haven't even called or texted anyone. Just all those softwares equal $600 a month. Right. And I was like, holy shit. Like, do you know for $600 a month, we can pull all your records, skip trace them, call 2000 and then text message 1000 a month. Right. <laughs> you know? and, 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 that, and that's kind of like what you were saying is, they it's almost like watching the news some people yeah. feel like watching the news is actually being an advocate of what they're watching right exactly well exactly. some i think investors know 
no no shame to them. They right. think that by paying the monthly subscription is them becoming a real estate investor. Yeah. Oh and my like, god. Oh my god, yes. But it's actually getting the lead. You know, I used to run that. So I, I was talking to this girl and uh -huh. she asked if I'd ever heard of this mentor that charges fifty thousand dollars to be a part of his program. Right. And I said, I said, I haven't, and I have nothing against that mentor. Right. But right. what I will share with you is this. If you put $50,000 into lead gen and you actually called every lead, you would probably make a million dollars. I agree with that. If you put $50,000 into an education company and then put $10,000 into lead gen, you will probably make a hundred thousand dollars. I agree with that. I was like, but I was like, you need to decide the real mentor is leads is in my that. honest opinion. If you're going to pursue them, you know, and you know what I tell all my clients and you know, this, you, you don't, you don't utilize me as much, but right. I'm like, look, if you pay my service, use me to get to the next stage with the lead. If you get a lead, you don't understand. Call me, Nick, what should I say? Hey, right. how should I approach this? You right. know, my, I've been doing this for five years. So right. and I, I think getting the lead and having me say, next, do this, call me when it's done. I right. mean, that, that to me is going to blow any type of, you know, $50,000, bro. Oh, and again, I'm not knocking that offering, Yeah, yeah. but you know, I, I've, I've seen it, you know, I, yeah. I've seen how then you pay 50 G's and then you think someone's going to do it for you. And absolutely and absolutely on. and that's not how it works and without lead generation you have nothing so many people call me and they're like eric i got this deal and then I'm this this is my okay have you talked to the seller no but it might be a deal. i'm like dude bruh they're so scared and then they're, and then they're like some people will be like i'm in this program and some people will be like i've been in this program for a year and i haven't done a deal or I've done one deal and then they'll call me and they'll be like, I see you doing deals. You've only been in a program like a month. What are you doing? And I'm like, and I look at their thing and I'm like, okay, how many calls have you made? How many right. sellers have you talked to? How many realtors have you talked to? And they've done nothing. Right. And so if you don't have lead generation, you don't have a business. Right. You need yeah. customers. I tell people be like, oh, I'm going to get my LLC. I say F all that. Right. F all that get house get leads, yeah. get leads. None of LLC, none of that matters because right. you have no income. You're right. spending income. You have no income. Right. Most people come from middle class or poverty. If you have nothing and very little, you need to get leads so you can see, this is what I'm doing. So the money that I'm going to make, I'm going to reinvest it with you. Right. And I had you do the text campaign. Now I'm going to have you call the realtors for me. Right. And in every market I go to, I'm going to have you do a text campaign. Why? Because it brings in leads. Every day I'm getting leads, right? And not just that, the return is infinite because I work with realtors. Right. So once a realtor doesn't deal with me, they know I can close. They're with, they're with you forever. They, they continue sending me. Right. So the return with you is infinite. Yeah, I invested $1,700, but I, I will probably make hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not a million dollars, with the hit real agents contacts. So, but if you got no leads, you got no business. Yeah. And you know, I like that you said that because I tell all my clients, so client and I, and I get it. We make leads easy. So when we get three leads, they think they got three leads, but I try to remind them. We spoke to 250 people that right. knows you want to buy a house. So right. That's a little different. That's kind of like what you, that's that exponential factor. And yeah. what I call that is one at a time marketing, because that's kind yeah. of what we're doing. We're marketing one person at a time. We're having right. good conversations. And, you know, we, this is true. I, this guy left me a review online. His name is Anton. Right. He got right. zero leads and right. he still made $13,000 on our program because someone called him two weeks later. And yeah. Said, Hey man, uh, this nice lady called, but I wasn't ready to sell, but now I am. And, right. he's, <laughs> and he's like, Nick, you made me 13 G's. I didn't even get a lead. And, you know, I, I love that story. So what I tell all customers now is whatever number you give us for the caller ID, make sure you never abandon that phone number because right. someone can always call back in. And I think when people use our service, 
they're forgetting that we're outbound and then us doing outbound means inbound leads come back in and it means old leads refer out new business and right. our strategy probably ends up being five strategies at the end of the day because right. outbound we're voicemails we're texting we're calling where right. notes on the fridge, <laughs> you right, know, right. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're really everywhere. And, yeah. and I think that like you were saying, um, the return is exponential, especially with realtors as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I wanted to talk about your, your follow-up system. So sure. we, we can help demystify um, what happens and you don't have to go into any specifics, but sure. like what I want you to get into when a lead comes in, Mm -hmm. you know, what are you doing that is getting you to these closed deals? Sure. Um, so as soon as the lead comes in, I send them an email with my buying criteria, my proof of funds. Immediately, I send them an email. And then after that, a couple of things happen. They'll either email me back immediately and they'll say, hey, I have this deal or I don't have anything right now, but follow up with me at a later point. Then I put them in the Aweber email follow up. And I, I um, send out them an email every week automatically. I just lay it out. And then eventually they'll hit me up or they'll text me. And then they'll be like, hey, Eric, I got this deal or whatever. And that's right. it. I keep it really simple. There's, right. it's, you know, it's interesting. So many agents will tell me, you know, I heard from this person, but they never call me back. They call back. Right. They never, they don't follow up. Or some agents will tell me, I just love your tenacity, man. I, I know this email is automated, but I just love that you will follow up with me. Here's a deal. Look right. at this deal. Do the cops for me. And, you know, Jim Rohn used to say the fortune's in the follow-up. My yeah. One of my mentors says the, the money's not made in the high. The money's made in the high again. Right. And so, and so you get us to the high again. Right. And that's where it is. You know, I'm a, I have a sales background. And in sales, I'm sure you heard this. They say on average, it takes seven touch, uh, touch points. Yeah. To get a customer. And I think sometimes it's a little bit more because people are selling their house. They're not buying a broom or some shit. They're selling their house. It's they a have emotional. Talk. It's a serious thing. They have emotional, sentimental. Uh, they're attached to it. If it's owner occupied, if it's a if it's an investor, um, maybe that house make them money or whatever. Right. So yeah. people don't just say you have people that are ready, but most People are sellers are not going to be, okay, I'm ready. I want to give you my house. That's not how it works. <laughs> That's not how yeah. it works, man. Yeah, it's like, you know, they a lot of people think it's going to happen quickly, but it, it really is. And I use this on my customers. So a lot of my customers, they don't buy in that talk, but right. they tell me, hey, uh, when I'm ready, I'm going to purchase. And then I remind them, hey, you know how you just said that to me? Yeah, yeah. this is the same way you need to handle your sellers. And right. when you're on the phone with them, they might not be ready, but you need to leave them with the vibe that when they are ready, you're the guy, exactly. you know? And it's like, that's the next best thing you can do. And almost, I mean, cold calling is not a one call close. That's not, right. that, that's called yeah. a hot. That's calling a hot lead is a one call. Right. Call. right. A cold call is a relationship. And if not a full relationship, at least you need to have the attitude that, we're beginning a relationship. Now, earlier you were talking about dealing with realtors. You have this great realtor strategy. Yeah. You get a list of realtors. And then when you get a lead, you send them your buy box, essentially. Right. Buying right. Very smart. Right. Um, and then you keep them on a drip follow-up. But yeah. if, we were, if we were to relate that to sellers, it's a very mm -hmm. similar system. You get mm -hmm. the lead, you call the seller, introduce yourself, let them know you're a resource. And hey, if your property meets this criteria, I'll buy it. If yeah. it doesn't, no hard feelings, but call me if anything changes. Right. And, and then you do it with once a week with realtors, but let's say we do it bi-weekly with homeowners, yeah. then just email them bi-weekly to stay in their world, you know? Yeah, yeah. and sometimes, yeah. this is a beautiful thing about what your service does, okay? This is what people don't understand. If there's any secret, I'm gonna give this secret away and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Things will happen quicker for you the bigger your pipeline is, period. Yeah. You have a bigger pipeline, you're going to do deals pretty quickly. Now, out of that big pipeline, you have a, a percentage that's going to want to sell now. 
then you're going to have a percentage, which is the majority of the percentage that won't be ready now, but maybe they'll be ready in a month, two yeah. months, three months. But if you follow up with them, they'll be like literally, oh, Eric, perfect timing. We're ready to go or whatever. Right. Perfect timing. Oh, right. we were, I was just talking yesterday to my mama about selling. We're ready to go. Please, can you send me the contract? Right. You got to work the numbers. First of all, you got to get a pipeline. This is what's beautiful about your service. Yeah. Within a couple of days, within a week, someone's pipeline can get pretty full, right? So yeah. you have people have to understand that you got no customers, you got nothing. You got no pipeline, you got nothing. Yeah. You have nothing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why I I refer my friend to you yesterday, who's a realtor, and he's like, I'm like, no, bro, you need a pipeline, bro. You're a realtor, you need a pipeline. Yeah. Period. You it's got no like pipeline. A one and done. Yeah, you you your hand to mouth. You're hand to mouth. You got no pipeline. You're head to mouth in your business. Right. You're stressed and you're going to quit. You can never mm -hmm. depend on one thing. Never depend on one seller. Never depend on one agent. You have to build it wide. This is business. Amazon is Amazon because they got a lot of customers. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, with, with our service, we, we are, and that's why some people call me, you should hear, Hey, Nick, this isn't a lead. You know, that's not a lead. You know, they said they wanted, you know, this much, you know, and I'm like, look, I, I get it, but they spent 15 minutes on the phone with us. I mean, do you, do you really think they're not, I mean, and then I tell them, well, do you want me to just delete it? I'll just delete. No, 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 don't delete it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. You know, so, right. like, and, and what that is, is, and I understand that perspective, but that's right. the new person's procrastination right agree. that's agree. that's like them you know i had one guy tell me this the other day he i i told him i said call every lead i don't give a shit what the notes say just right. call and he goes you know what nick i like that because i'll get a lead and i'll do 20 minutes of research and wow. you know what one 10 minute phone call and i'll have everything that i need and then mm -hmm. while i'm doing research i'm like oh that's not gonna work no that's not mm -hmm. gonna work either mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the research just disqualifies you. Call the person. And you know what the truth is? The research mm. could be wrong. The internet. Absolutely. Yeah, they're not going to have the right property value or the right square footage or the right contract amount. You know, and that's people they trust their the research too much. This is the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like you don't don't trust your research. Talk to the person. Their uncle could have given them that house two years ago. Yes clean free you know like yeah. we don't know what people are going to and uh and so i and i think and i think the lesson there is don't kill your pipeline right i agree oh you're, i agree with that. you're talking about getting a pipeline i'm talking about clients who are disqualifying leads they're killing their pipeline before it even fills right right, right. and here's the thing people are afraid of the phone and that's okay because they have they have a service like yours, and so that's beautiful. But even on the follow-up, we're talking about killing the thing, but they're trying to avoid, you know, the rejection or whatever. Right. But the thing is, the, the, the beautiful thing about following up, number one, is what you just said. You never know, right? You never know. And let's say I've had sellers, um, and I'm going to go back to doing direct to seller, but I have sellers tell me, like, F off. I would never sell at this price, blah, 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 whatever, right? And then three months later, they're like, hey, man, things change. But, <laughs> but, and they, but they remember you because you caught them. And I've had so many sellers when I was direct to seller. You know what? I talked to this other person, but they never called me. They never followed up with me. You followed up with me. I want to do business with you. Because oh, yeah. here's, yeah. here's the thing. When you follow up, it builds credibility. Right. It builds yeah. credibility. You're a, You're a real yeah. business when you follow yeah. up. Because mm -hmm. let's say me and you, I'm like, hey, Nick, um, let's go out to dinner, right? And then I don't show up. I just ghost you, no text, no call. I, I lose credibility with you as a friend. You're like, this dude is whatever, bro. I ain't messing with him. No but problem. let's say I'm like, I call you my, hey, Nick, you know, I'm, I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. I'm sorry, bro. You know, you drove out there. Let me, um, let me send you some $20 for gas. Now you're like, all right, bro, it's cool. Now we're good. We're keeping all that right. relationship. And any business... More, no more than real estate, in my opinion, is a people business. It's real estate that you cannot, you cannot I automate exclude through. the person, right? Bro, it's people business. Talking to realtors, talking to sellers, talking to lenders. You have to talk to people in this business because it's such a high value asset. 
it's people are not buying bubble gum. This right. is a house. They ain't selling bubble gum. They selling their house. It's everything. So you gotta talk to people. It's where After. their kids grew up. It's where they. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They've got all these. Yeah. You gotta listen to that. I'll tell you a quick story. So one of the deals we're closing that came from your campaigns. This is a husband and wife. They're both realtors. Listen to this. They're both realtors. Wow. But they did not want to list the house. They're getting a divorce. This is why they're selling the house. They're wow. getting a divorce. So from the from the text campaign that you were doing for me, this lady calls me. Her name is Angie, and she has, says, "Hey Eric, I wanted to call out to I want to reach out to you because I get these texts from these people who are overseas, and then I call and I can never get a hold of anybody. So I appreciate you answering the call. Me and my husband are getting a divorce. We don't want to list. Um, I already moved out the house. Can you guys buy this house for me? And then I call the husband. His name is Lonnie, and we're just building all this rapport." Right. He's telling me about how he lost weight since they divorced and how he met his wife and how his kids grew up in that house. And you have to listen to that. And it was interesting. And you have to build that. People have to trust you. This is their home. This is what they're attached to. This right. is what you they need love. to hear the story. That's important. You got to. You got to. They have to know. Look, people don't people want to know that you care about them at least a little bit. Yeah. At least a little bit. <laughs> you don't have to become best friends with the seller. But you got, they have to feel like you care about them just a little bit. And you should care about the sellers a little bit by doing them right, helping them get the money that they need to move out. And, and, and you need to show that. You need to have empathy when you're talking to people, right? We're not selling products on Amazon where we, we don't have to interact with people. Right. This is people's homes. So you've got to interact and talk to people and build rapport and trust and empathy. Because people, you can have money, but if they don't trust you, they won't do business with you. I figured yeah. that people do business with people that they like and trust. Yeah. Period. And people that they think like them, right? How's yes. That, how's that for that's that's actually pretty powerful too. Like if I didn't think you liked me, I'd be like, well, he must be trying to fuck me then. <laughs> why, else, why else would he do a deal with me if he hates me? Right. Exactly. And so it's like, you know, they they need to, you need to be like a bull. You know, one of my yeah. favorite one of my yeah, favorite I had him call me. Nick, and we didn't even talk about the deal. He just called me one day and we just talked about women. We talked about working out. And that was all the conversation was about. It wasn't right. even about his house. Right. And that's how I knew how to build rapport with him. Yeah. And then I had one, yeah, and I had one agent, and this never happens. Me and her build such a good rapport. And she came, I just closed on that the deal I just closed. She came from your text message campaign and for me in. She let me talk to the seller. She said, you know what, Eric? I need you to talk to the seller for me, explain something. Let me tell you, realtors never let the, the buyer talk to the seller. That never happens. Okay. But that showed me that I had built such a rapport with the agent that she trusted me. Yeah, I trusted and you that, with her client. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a big you know? deal. I, I was listening to Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And, and right. Stephen, Stephen Covey says, if you want to be trusted then you must be trustworthy. Yeah. Right? And that yes. reminds me of if you want to be liked, then you must be like a bull. Absolutely. And I think, I think that that is, and I think that it's important to get clear before we make these calls that we have to, like in the cartoons when they had dollar signs in their eyes, <laughs> yeah. like, like, we got we to gotta wash those out. You know, <laughs> yeah. we can't yeah. like show up and be like, yeah. And my grandma lived here. Look, lady, sign the fucking contract. <laughs> I don't care about Graham Graham. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. No, you're, and, but yeah, you know, I, I, I think that, I think these are really powerful tips, you yeah. know, and I think most of our conversation has really almost been centered around getting the gusto to make these calls and, yeah. and do what's necessary. You know, you, right. we, we never know what these people are going to say. And I know, I know, I know people want to read my notes and, and right. then I'm like, look, don't, don't, not that we're lying, but don't trust the notes because right. that person doesn't know us well enough yet to really right. do that. You know, I have a saying that always makes people not chuckle, but I say, look, I barely know what my father's going through. And I talk right. to him once a week. Um, right. This seller is not going to be completely honest with me, you know, right. on the first conversation. So don't, but I can tell you if they sat there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they answered some of the questions, 
then they're way more interested than you think they are right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like um, if you go on a date with someone, you don't know that person. Right. You don't know. Right. You don't know their their history, what baggage they have, how they grew up. Even if when you were first, uh, like you said, I used to be a dating coach, and I used to tell my students, don't take rejection personal. If a woman rejects you, you don't know what she might hate men. She might have just gone through a breakup. She might mm. uh, she might be moody. She might can't pay her rent. Um, you might just not be her type. You might remind her of somebody else who broke her. You don't know. Right. So don't don't assume. Don't yeah. take things personal. That's and right. again, it's like, like you said, the dollar sign thing. It's like some of these people, it's like me, if I went on a date and I'm like, we just met, oh, will you marry me after five minutes on a date? You asking yeah. sellers to marry you and you haven't even courted them. Yeah. You haven't even courted them yet. Can you at yeah. least court the seller? Yeah. You know? Right. And so- yeah, just it's cool. I get it. We want the money. I get it. You know, I I come from poverty, so I get it. But the thing is, like, you have to calm down, relax. Talk. They're human beings. I think people forget sellers are human beings. Right. They look at them as just transactions. Mm-hmm. But they're human beings that you need to talk to and communicate with. Yeah, right. I know. And, and it's like, and that's, that's why I try to point that out on my calls. I'm like, treat them exactly how I'm treating you. And the way mm-hmm. I'm treating you is how I want to be treated. And it's yeah. like, it's really, but I know that that's hard. That's, that that's harder said than done. You know, sure. I've, I've been a restaurant manager for 13 years. I was an executive. Right. So I've done, I've treated a lot of people, a lot of different ways. And, right, of course. You know, and it took me a long time to get here. But, but when you, like, I was talking to this customer the other day and, and she goes, I can't believe you answer the phone yourself and you do all this. And I said, so, well, look, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't want to give this to anybody else. This is so important to me. And if I right. gave this to someone else, they might piss you off and then I'll still have to, they'll <laughs> to me anyways. Right, right, right. You know, and, and I love being there for my clients, but it's because I'm such a pain in the ass. When If I walked into your place of business, I right. am a huge pain in the ass. I am, <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm yeah, the worst. yeah. But that's what makes me a good entrepreneur because I assume everyone's me. Right. So if I assume everyone's as sensitive as I am, and we got to be honest with ourselves. Right. 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 And if everyone was as sensitive as I am, then I need to take that into consideration because I can't afford to lose customers. I can't afford to do these things. Right. Um, and, And so I think that that's really important is to realize that you know, we just all need to be treated like people. And like you said, if someone needs to go on, you know, and investors call me all the time and right. my girl, hears a lot of it. And she's like, she's like, Nick, this is, she's like, you're really there for these people. She's like, right. these are like therapy sessions, you know, the last company yeah. ripped them off and took $2,000 mm-hmm. and then did this. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, we got you and I'm sorry you went through that. And I give them mm-hmm. tips on like free lead gen, mm-hmm. I'm like mm-hmm. we'll do this free shit. Cause since you got mm-hmm. ripped off and. And, you know, she's like, Nick, you're, you're really like a mentor to these people call. And, and that's why I give the advice of be the resource, because if you can show up or, Hey, you know, Sally, I've been in real estate for 25 years. You know, I know you called me, but do you have any questions about, you know, repairing their home or selling it? And maybe I can connect you with someone, you know, it's like how almost, how can we serve them first? Yeah, yeah. To, to get them to serve us, it's 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 being a go giver. I'll tell you, it's being a go giver because I'm a big believer. Look, what you put out in the universe, you will get back. That's just how the universe works. There's no denying that. If you put out good stuff and you help people, that will come back into your life. Now, will things happen? Of course, this is life. Things happen. Murphy's law. Some days, that's yeah. okay. That's life. But in general. If you put out good stuff, if you generally help people with, with nothing in return, the universe will reward you with that back. Something's good. I help absolutely. I helped so many. I helped a lady the other day. I helped her get a deal. And she took uh 30 minutes out of my day. I said, I'm gonna just help her. Single mom, let me just help her. You know, so many people call me with questions. Oh, can you cop this for me? Sure, I'll help. I do it because and then I do it because I know it's gonna come back. And then people will come back to me 
like, Eric, I got this deal. Can you bring a buyer? And and they want they just want to give me deals. Why? Yeah. Because I wasn't expecting that because I, I understand how the universe works. So that's number one. We It's just being a go-giver. We talk about being a resource. And yeah. then I want to go back to what we were talking about. Um, my point is, you are saying, uh, I, I forget what you were saying, but my point was, I wanted to say this. By talking to people, you become more calibrated. You learn how to do empathy. So you were saying uh, when you're a restaurant owner, a manager, you know, you didn't treat everybody the same, but as you got more experience, right. then you will learn to calibrate. So I'll tell people when you, when you overthink and you don't follow up the cause, you're just robbing yourself. You're just robbing yourself because yeah. now let's say you had an incident, uh, an incident with one seller and that, that same incident happens when now you know how to handle it. Now right. you know how to handle it, right? So I had an incident with a seller. He had this probation thing, and it happened to me with another seller. And I said, okay, this is how we're going to handle it. This is what, what paperwork needs to be done. He's like, bro, you know your stuff. Okay, I want to sell to you. Just, But I took that experience from a past experience with a seller. That, <laughs> yeah. So when people, yeah, when you're afraid to call, you're afraid to call these leads, you're doing yourself a disservice. And let's say eventually you, and then, when you learn how to talk to sellers, you can train somebody else how to talk to sellers. So you just learn so many ways, but by avoiding by avoiding the follow up, you do yourself a huge disservice. You know, you and it's almost it's and it's almost respecting the practice that it mm -hmm. takes to get to where you're going. Look, mm -hmm. so what you suck right now. Well, if you suck, that means you need to do it more. That doesn't yes. mean procrastinate more. That means right. you need to be twice as eager to fuck this up because, <laughs> <laughs> because that's how you're going to learn something, you know, yeah. but that is, yeah. that's so true. You know, I was, I was always the guy before I created lead mining that mm -hmm. had another lane brain idea, another business I was starting up, you know, and nothing right. hit, nothing hit. And a lot of my friends had like judgments about that. Oh, you're right. doing this now. But now when lead mining hit, what they don't know is those 25 failed ideas has led me to this one that succeeds. And Absolutely. it's exactly what you're saying. You know, practice does make perfect. And yeah. it doesn't make perfect the way you think it does. It makes no. perfect when it sucks. That's actually when yeah. practice makes perfect, you know? Yeah. And I like to say pra practice makes improvement because there's no such thing as perfect. Pra yeah. Or you could say practice makes excellence. And I, I like this quote. It says, success is 99% failure. And I have that quote um, on my right. wall. And I remember that. How do you want to succeed? Double your failure rates. <laughs> Double your failure rates. That's how you succeed. I used to tell my clients, you want to get that dream girlfriend? Talk to twice as many women. Right. Double yeah. your failure rates. And, and that know, is how you succeed. And it, it reminds me of even my advice I give to some people recently, which is real estate is one of the few industries where quantity does beat quality. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, you really do need to, like, I had a guy actually have a really successful campaign, 14 leads. And he's like, Nick, what can we do about the quality? Right. And I was like, honestly, I can't do anything about the quality, but right. you can work on your quality of following up. And your quality of how you're going to approach what you think is a low quality lead. I yes. was like, that's what can change. I'm just calling people to see if they want right. to sell. I can't right. make them want to sell any more right. than they do. But right. you can take this rough piece of coal and right. get better systems to turn it into a diamond. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it, it is, it's really more of a quantity game. And I tell them, look, if you're getting leads, First of all, that's huge. If you think the yeah. quality is low, there's people out there getting zero leads with zero quality. So yeah. it's better yeah. than getting, you know, nothing's worse than that. Getting 10 leads with what we think is low quality is an amazing right. sign that we right. are on the right path. Yeah. And the numbers sometimes, look, man, sometimes people, human beings, we lie to ourselves. We, we, oh my God, especially in real estate, I can't tell you how many sellers they, I think my health is worth this and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And we do this as entrepreneurs. We lie to ourselves. I've been putting the, in the work. I can't tell you how many people call me, Nicholas. Eric, I can't do a deal for the save of my life. I've been putting in the work. I'm like, okay, well, let's, how many calls have you made this week? Where's your spreadsheet? Where can you show me your data? Right. Because you have the data, you have an unbiased look. 
nine out of ten times they're either not doing the work at all yeah. or they haven't done as much work as they thought and that's why i love your service because i can look at the data you send me the data right then i can say okay you know what maybe it's not the quality of leads maybe i need to get, uh make have nick make more calls send out more texts sometimes the solution is more right yeah. especially in this business and then again the more you do the more leads you get now the the more the more you go through and something's going to hit quicker and faster yeah you start getting that, that that momentum there's and no then, magic pill there's no magic pill right yeah and if you're seeing results go for it and that's really what i tell people too if to the least because we're no contracts no commitments use me to split test what does work Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. hire me in Dallas and we'll cold call and text. And then, you know what we're going to find? We've seen this in Dallas is that okay. cold calling sucks, but texting does great. You right. Know? So then after you do that, don't have us cold call anymore. Just, <laughs> you know, it's like right. use the data, learn from it and then execute what we've learned. And and that's where I try to urge a lot of my clients like we are split testing your marketing. We're not flying blind. We're not a marketing. Oh, I hope this works. <laughs> it's, right, right. It, it's, you know, let's see if it works. And if not, we've got a bunch of different, we could try new caller IDs. We could try new list types. We could try different. A lot of people bring stuff to me. So if right. they need their list and it doesn't go well, I say, let me get you, I'll cover the list and the skip tracing. Let's try my stuff out. Right. You know, and so- that there's so many options that we can take to troubleshoot and, you know, and it, it is so worth doing it because as soon as you can crack that code or yeah. use the right script and on the right list, you know, it really, it, it can really bring you back in the game. Yeah. And that's what business is about. Like you're not, again, there's no quick fix that mindset, that lottery mindset, when it comes to business, you got to lose that. And um, because you're going to, you just send yourself up for failure. And the thing is, yeah, you got to make adjustments and you got to figure out what works and then you just go from there. And, and that's business. There's no, right. Everyone's yeah, going through no, that. Yeah. There's no magic pill. You figure out what works and you run with it and you make adjustments along the way. And when the market changes, you make adjustments, you know what I'm saying? And, and only you go, and that's it. The only people that don't have to do that is Walmart and Amazon. And that's only because they've already done it. You know, yeah. they, they've already went through that growth. But, you know, even me and my business, I'm like, okay, I run Facebook ads. Well, now I do Google. Well, next I need to do SEO. And it's, right. all, you know, every, even the experts are, are, are always testing. You know, of course. I, I read this book called uh, zero to a million followers right. in 30 days and it was right. really cool and this guy talks about how when he comes up with a he calls them hook points it's like a yeah. one sentence like the one we created earlier i wrote it down and said let us be consistent for you right yeah yeah that, that's like a hook point he says he'll create a hundred renditions of those wow and choose 20 of the hundred and then right. test 20 you know, and wow. I share that because even the experts are testing. Testing isn't a new thing. It's actually an everything. It doesn't just happen to new people. It's something, you know, we should always be doing. When you find out what works, you keep that leg running. And then you, like you with the realtors, perfect example. You'll mm -hmm. never stop that. Yeah, know? exactly. But next it's like, well, let's try cold calling a couple sellers. Let's try cold calling other. Let's try cold calling locksmiths. You know, Absolutely. Then, then we start to split test, you know, our, our other areas to, yeah, to exactly. manage that. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. You're exactly right, Nick. And 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 again, it's 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 going through and oh, here's what I was gonna say. People want these guarantees. There's no guarantee in business. Right. People go to college for four years. They get in debt, hundreds of thousand dollars in debt. They know nothing is guaranteed, and they gladly go in debt because there may be uh, some gold at the end of that rainbow. That's maybe. Point. That's a huge maybe, right? Mm -hmm. And because as we know, the data shows college degrees are becoming less and less valuable because of yeah. the internet. And that's yeah, a fact. That's yeah. a fact. Nothing against college, but these are the facts. Yeah. So you people go into business, and they'll, they'll I, I know you deal with this, Nick. 
oh, um, I have $2,000 and um, I, can you guarantee me that I'm going to make a sale? And I'm like, hold on, you went to college, you spent 40000 a semester. You, you you didn't ask your uh you didn't ask your professors this, but if you want to get into entrepreneurship and spend two thousand measly dollars, which is which is no money. That's right. gas basically, and you want guarantees? That's not how it works, man. Right. That's not how it works. It, there's some risk here. There's some risk here, and then maybe you win, maybe you don't, but you go back, you learn from it, and you keep going. There's no guarantees in this in you're, business. You're exactly right, and you know, and I don't know if you know this because you never had to. This year, we've actually put two guarantees in place, mm. and, which is which is awesome, you know. Right. But you're, you're exactly right, and that's why we try to soften the blow. And right. we have we have two, and one is what I call a no lead guarantee. Okay, okay. so if anyone gets zero leads, mm. no matter what they bought, I will give them something half the size of whatever they bought. So oh, nice. if you spend a thousand dollars with me and we get right. zero, and honestly, even if we still get one, I still honor this because right. one is zero, right? right. Um, but then I will give you a $500 Legion campaign, but there has to be changes to it. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm never like, let's do the same thing over <laughs> and, and hope it gets better. I'm always like, right. hey, let's meet, let's troubleshoot it. And then let's start in a better direction, but that's one guarantee. Right. And the other right. guarantee is I just call it a satisfaction guarantee. So if you do get over one lead or over zero leads, but you're still dissatisfied, I mean, you know me, Eric, but I'll do yeah. anything. Like, look, may, do, I'll pull a couple hundred records. I'll give you a couple hundred dials. Let's right. let's see if we can crack the code. And, right. and I like these because and now, granted, these are guarantees if it's not working, right? Right. And right. if it is working, my advice is to keep it up. But if it's not, right. I want my customers to feel protected. I want them sure. to feel safe. And and I do this. And and it and you know what's most important? Yeah. It, I think other than making customers feel better, right? It's actually better for me because instead of them going online and complaining about it, they're right. like, hey, Nick actually has this guarantee. So why don't I just talk to him about it? Exactly. And that saves me. I didn't even realize the side effect left. That saves me the real headache because now right. I don't have people leaving bad reviews. I have people sharing with me how they feel. And I'm like, well, hey, we didn't do anything wrong here, but I'll still, right. I still want you to feel good. So let me give you right. some, Lead and let me do this. And you know, that's also been a huge benefit. But you yeah, know, and it builds credibility for you. you yeah, yeah, right. What what a good point. They know I stand behind my product in that in that sense. And you know, and I love that because there is there is no guarantees. We didn't go to college and do that. And then you right. know, and then I still go out of my way to make sure that you know that that your dollar is spoken for. It's not yeah. It's it's not gone out there and oh I hope that did well and right. you know, tell clients is there's no sorry about your luck whenever you right lose. right 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 if you had bad luck I let let's analyze it let's figure it out and let's go on to the next thing and you know what I might even cover some of that yeah you know? because people because it's like if you go to a restaurant and you have a bad experience and they're like what have, well you know you know you've been in restaurant business and the people are just like nonchalant about your bad experience and they they hear you complain but they're not proactive and they just okay yeah but versus if you have the manager come out i'm so sorry you know let's cover you next time you come here right. a yeah. we'll take care of you let's give you a partial refund you feel better you like they care i'm gonna come back again right. versus if they're like whatever you, the, yeah. you know the hostess the is rude the manager is rude right. you lose a customer they go on yelp they talk mess about you everybody. and it's an experience people want People pay for good experiences. Period. And you know what? And people and people remember you more than you think they do. I've had clients give me a list of what they call warm leads, leads right. they've spoken to in the past. And right. that let person, me give my charge real quick. My phone, my um you're my good. Is give me you're one good. second. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Man.
I didn't want the stream to cut off in the middle. I'm like, Ugh. okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you're saying you had customers um, give you warm leads. Oh, yes. yeah. So what I was what I was saying was people also remember more than we give them credit for. I've had customers yes. give us warm leads for us to color up with, and they'll remember that that the client didn't call them back a year ago. You know, <laughs> they, they will be like, no, no, I'm Jimmy. I remember Jimmy. Yeah, son of a bitch. He is a, uh, like, and then we normally and then we have to report back like, hey, you know, um, uh, bad news. Uh, our calls weren't very well received because this guy, Jimmy, was there ever a Jimmy that worked there? Oh, yeah, there was. And or, mm -hmm. oh, I'm Jimmy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> uh, you know, you got to call your leads back. And 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 I think that's another important lesson. These people, they like you said, you know, we can sometimes not give the seller so much credit, but right. if we leave a bad taste in their mouth and they go tell 10 friends and they go do this, you know, that's, that's a part of that law of the universe you were saying earlier, working against us, you know, yeah. when yes. we follow up so much good things happen on top of the credibility, on top of everything else, you know, we are telling the world to give us more of what we're looking for whenever we're pursuing it. Yeah, yeah, because I tell my buyers, like, not when I blast out the property and I'm trying to sell the property, those buyers I don't have a relationship with like that. But I have a core buyer. I have, like, five buyers that I have a relationship it's with. It's like tight with. Yeah. Right, that I, like, once I get a property on the contract, these are the five guys before I blast it out to the university. And one of them, he's a good guy. He's bought a couple of properties from me. But like when he's not interested in the property and just telling me, instead of telling me, hey man, these, these numbers don't work, he'll just ghost me. And I had a conversation with him. And I'm like, listen, bro, like we have a relationship and I I don't, don't ghost me, bro. Just tell me that the numbers don't work. Yeah. Right? Because it's like, you lose credibility with me and I'm not motivated to keep sending you deals, bro. All just right. tell me, hey, Eric, I don't like, I say, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I'm not a seller. Right. I'm not sensitive. Just be, just be direct. Be like, I Eric, get, these numbers don't work. This is what I need. And we're good. Yeah. It's like, I get more sensitive by you hurting the relationship by ghosting me. Yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather have you reply and say, not this one. And, and then I, but you know what, when you say nothing and three days later you say, yes, then I already sold it. Now, now yeah. everyone's pissed. You know what I because mean? Because our relationship loses credibility when you do that. If I don't know you and you ghost me, I don't care. But if I know you and you ghost me, bro, I'm like, come on, man. Like that, and it, because it's an experience. It's an all experience. Human beings, we're emotional. We we justify with logic, but we make our decisions with emotion. We go to work because we don't want to not pay our bills. Because not paying our bills makes us feel a certain way. Everything we do is based off emotion. Right. Yeah. Based off. So of when you give when you give people bad emotions, they're not gonna want to come back to that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why. And people remember the negative more than they remember the positive yeah. because we live in a negative world. Look at the news; it's all negative. There's mm -hmm. nothing positive about it. But people tune into it, right? So when you give people negative experiences, they'll tell twenty people. You give them a positive experience, they'll tell five people. Right. But yeah. but still, it's like this is how human beings are wired. So you like it doesn't mean you got to kiss ass, but you got to just have credibility, be thorough and follow up with people. Well, yeah. And, and it's almost people. like it's almost like, you know, having good principles. Right. Yeah. You know, you're not being a suck up. You're being someone who is trustworthy, you know, yes. you're being someone who is in integrity, you know, and so it's like. It can be easy to chop it up as, oh, you know, it's okay if I do that to them. But, you know, we have right. to remember that, you know, hey, what, what, what would we do? What do we want? And am I sending signals that I want more of this or less of this? You know, a little bit of this talk is law of attraction ask. Yeah. But, yeah. You no, know, I can tell you that as soon as you get sidetracked, Mm -hmm. whatever you're sidetracked from is going to automatically be giving you less. You know, if you're yeah. killing it at work and you meet this super hot chick or mm -hmm. this super amazing life partner, 
and mm-hmm. then you stop showing up to work and we've probably all been there at one point in our lives or another no. <laughs> we meet someone, and then we drop all of our responsibilities uh-huh. and then we're like uh, and then and then that someone either leaves us or goes away for a weekend and we go back mm-hmm. to all of our friends like dude you ghosted us or that your bills aren't paid your job's upset at you you know and it's like these yeah. actions tell the world and the universe that you want more of it you know so pursuing Absolutely. leads following up and acting with integrity and consistently is yeah. is ensuring that you know you are whatever that path is maybe it's not real estate investor maybe it's right. executive maybe it's yeah. you know being the best restaurant manager you know right. that that was my goal for 13 years of my life you know right. after i quit you know what was funny was I had a friend come up to me and tell me, dude, uh, we used to have this friend who was uh, always an office employee and I was always a restaurant worker. Right, and he, right. Dude, that guy hated you, bro. He said, <laughs> he was so confused on why you were so proud to be a restaurant manager. He's right. like, dude, that guy picks up trash for people. How? Why is he so proud of what he does? You right. know? And I won't tell you where he is today, but I know where I'm at. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I took that pride and I turned it into, you know what? If I was prideful picking up your throw up and cleaning up the bathroom, imagine how prideful I am to serve you leads that you're making $20,000 off of right now. Right. You know what I mean? If I cared that the toilet was clean, imagine how much I care that I just, I'm creating generational wealth for other people. Yeah. You know, like when we find a way to, to really transfer that pride. And, you know, anyone watching this or need anything, you know, also feel free to reach out to me. You know, I'm i I'm an open book when it comes to this stuff. And if you're having a hard time anchoring down to your principles, so you can get to that next level, you know, feel free to reach out, you know? And I say, and I say, um, you know what? I second that I've known Nick for a couple of years now and, you know, he's a thorough dude. And what he, what he says is what he means. And, and that's one reason I keep coming back because I know I can trust you. That's, there's a lot of businesses that do what you do, right. but I know that I can trust you. I know that your people are going to reach out to me. They're going to um, ask me questions. Now they're going to leave me hanging. You're going to do what you say. You're going to sit down and take time with me. And, and this is the major, and your service delivers. So this is one major reason why I'm like, why would I go with anybody else? Right. We have a relationship and, and, and he and I know I can call the dude and he'll answer his phone. And if, even if it doesn't, he'll call me back and let me know. So it's like, you know, you're building that credibility with people. And I appreciate you, brother. And yeah. and yeah, man, this is just it's a beautiful thing. I appreciate what you do and I appreciate how you are helping me. And I'm going to continue to use your service. And I encourage people to reach out to you and use your service. And I recommend you all the time to people all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, brother. And dude, thank you so much. Bro. I really appreciate you, you know, you saying all that, you know, you taking the time to jump on here with me and, and everything, you know, um, it really means a lot to me. You know, it, it, it it's tough being an entrepreneur. And it's hard. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it's it's scary. It's like being on a roller coaster, you know, like, oh, I made $10,000, but am I going to keep making $10,000? <laughs> I was just having that thought today. I'm like, okay, so I, all right, now what am I going to do next month? <laughs> yeah, exactly. As far right. as keeping it going, right? As far as keeping yeah. it going, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's 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 tough, but it's it's so rewarding and so freeing, and you grow so much, and yeah. and you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, but th- there is that, you know, and, and it's good. It's a good thing. I think. Um, to a certain extent, you kind of have to be that way to, c- to continue growing. I think a lot of people become complacent. And I think when you become complacent, everything downfalls, whether it's your health, um, you take your partner for uh, granted, that starts to deteriorate, um, your business, anything that you start to slack on will deteriorate. So to a certain extent, you still, you need to take breaks here and there because we're human, but to a certain extent, you got to stay vigilant. Yeah. And, and, and you feel alive when you stay vigilant. I, yeah. I was telling my girl the other day, I'm never going to retire. Why right. would I do that? Why would I do that? Right. Why? You know, I'm going to be doing this till they put me in the ground. I love right. it. it. Well, it's cool because you're in control. So you're also in control. When you're an entrepreneur, you're controlling how easy it is on you. You know, if you were overwhelming yourself, you'd be like, I need to fucking retire. But if you're like, right. 
yo, I feel retired now. <laughs> so why, why would I ever retire? And I think, and, and that's, and that's definitely the point of, you know, the good systems, you know? Yeah. And that's um, why and your service is so beautiful because I don't worry about it. I would literally just wake up and, um, how, how well, that's how you pronounce his name. How well he, they would, your people would have, I had emails like, Oh, leads. Okay. Now I'll just, Put it up and send it. Have my cool. Like wake yeah. up again. Oh, more leads. Like oh, it's, okay, cool. Yeah. Like so, I don't and I don't have to train. I don't have to worry about who's watching them and where's the data. I know your company handles that. Frees up my mind because as a as an investor, as a wholesaler and investor, I make money comping properties. I don't make money uh, uh, doing cold calls and doing all of that. At least to that. But that's not the main money making activity. It's looking uh -huh. at properties, topic property. So if I can outsource that to you and focus on the main money making activities, I'm I'm good. I'm rolling now. Yeah. I'm rolling. Yeah, you can you can get that momentum. Yes, okay. sir. Rock and roll, bro. Thank you so much for joining bro, I me appreciate today. You, bro. This this was go such forward. a good idea. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna probably get this video out there, get it chopped up. I'll even give yeah, you yeah. access to it too. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure you can find a creative way to you know use this. Um, but you know I thank you for being a great customer and a, a longtime customer. And you know I look I look forward to you know what's what's next for you and us. Thank you. I appreciate you, and I consider you family. And I thank you, bro. Oh yeah, brother. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Do have a good one, man. Peace.